Warning, this video contains spoilers and can be triggering due to topics of abuse, kidnapping, suicide, and death. Viewer discretion is advised. Good evening once again, everyone. Welcome back to Tea Time with Cat. Hi. I'm back. Can't get rid of me yet. <laughs> and no one is trying to. Yeah, but I'm it's just more trying... funny to say. Well, sure. I understand. But tonight we're going to be continuing our conversation with Five Nights at Freddy's. Ah! That's right. We're going to be doing... A we're up to game five now? Yes, we're okay. up at sister location. Okay, sister location. Okay. I know, I'm doing a lot of weird things right now with things and things and other things. Because so that's what I do now. There, it almost just fell off the desk. Mm, that's our baby. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. Oh my kitten. Oh my kid. Oh, yeah, that's nice kitty. That's nice kitty. You don't want to hurt nice kitty. Kill it. Don't hurt nice kitty. Kill it. Nice kitty is the loth cat. Do it. All right. So Do Five it. Nights at Freddy's. Five <clears throat> Nights at Freddy's. is about five nights at Freddy's. <laughs> <laughs> Surviving five nights at Freddy's. So yes. true. Yeah. So true. So I've been watching a lot of Markiplier. Can you tell? I can. I Yeah. yeah I really can. <laughs> You're turning into me from 2016. That's right. It's a rough time. That's right. I am the king of Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah. And I do good at video games, and I'm very loud, and I have a good voice, and I'm very handsome. And So true. <laughs> My favorite line from any of those, I really like the compilations that he does for each game. Mm -hmm. My favorite line from any of them, I think it's FNAF 4, where he goes, this is going to be an ass bass blasting bitch Lloyd. <laughs> favorite line <laughs> quoted it all the time in eighth grade yeah oh my oh, and hi nana and papa hi nana and papa <laughs> i'm still your sweet sweet granddaughter <laughs> just ignore that here we are again folks okay so let's go ahead and get into it okay we left off at the beginning of sister location i'm pretty sure we didn't even talk we just mentioned sister location yeah. we didn't do much beyond that all righty we're going to get into Afton family lore, because this is where it comes into play. Okay. So, if you remember from last time, if you were taking notes and studying like you should have been, um, yeah, I'm not judging. I'm just a little disappointed. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. man. See, and they didn't even start up my sound effects yet. Oh. And, yeah. If you don't remember who the Afton family is, I'm a little disappointed. So... Quick recap: The Afton family. We learned that William Afton designed the electric. The, does whoa, designed the <laughs> animatronics. Yes. For Sister Location, we learned that at the beginning of Sister Location with a cutscene. Okay. So now we're gonna get into Afton fam family lore because we've met some family members and we don't really know that yet. So we're gonna get into that first because it makes more sense later on. Okay. So we have William Afton. He is the dad. He is one of the co-founders of Freddy Fazbear's. We know that. Um, we're gonna get into his kids because we don't know much about his wife. Don't know much about her. We do I, learn a little bit about her, but okay. And I'm I'm hoping so because I mean of everything I've watched so far, that's about all we know. I, I know nothing. That's about, about all we know about his spouse or yeah. that he even had one. He does. Okay. Um, so he has two sons and a daughter. We have, um, Michael is one of the sons. We don't know the name of the younger brother. We just know that he is the crying child that we met in the fourth game. Okay. And we have Elizabeth, my beloved Elizabeth. Sweet, sweet girl. Uh -huh. Love her. Okay. We know that this... So, in Sister Location, we just get an ambient voice. It is a young British girl. So, we can assume that Afton, with his British accent, has a British daughter. So... Okay. That is how we're able to correlate that for right now we do get more evidence later on but that is all that we have for right now all right 
So let's get into Sister Location. Sister Location is a play on both names of Sister. It is owned by the same people, so it is a Sister Location of the overall company. But it also is all about Elizabeth, the sister of the family. So in this game, it is completely new, um, like, mechanics of how the game actually works. Like, we are no longer sitting in an office. You can actually move around, look around. Kind of crazy. First time this has been available in a Five Nights at Freddy's game. So we are, again, a security night guard. Um, I don't remember if it's night guard or mechanic. I think it's kind of both. You're just the night person that works. Okay. Um, you go down an elevator. That's where the game starts. You're going down an elevator. And this is where we get our own, like, phone guy voice. But it's not phone guy. It's a pre-recorded, like, audio recording that they play for all new staff members. Okay. Um, and you're inputting your name. And the name that it gives you is Eggs Benedict. It's just funny. <laughs> so Okay, so Scott's just being weird. Yeah. Okay. Um, the same voice has you... Pick music for your elevator ride, pick a different voice to listen to, and pick your ending prize. So the things that you pick in each of those, doesn't matter what you type in, it's you will always get this because the keyboard glitches out so you can never actually type in anything. Ah, okay. Yeah, so you get this okay. no matter what. So your name okay. is Eggs Benedict. You pick exotic bongos music for your elevator ride. <laughs> you um, choose angsty teen as your new voice to listen to instead of the original voice oh joy and you get exotic a basket of exotic butters oh uh, okay okay those are the sure. fun little things that you get in sure. this game yeah sure so when you go down into the first like room thing you are crawling through vent ventilation shafts to get to each little part of this like underground facility this is an underground storage facility that you're in for the different animatronics so this is where people can contact the location, rent out the animatronics, have them for however long they rent them for, and then return them, and then we do repairs on them. That's what this new game mechanic is. Okay. Yeah. It's weird. This is where everything gets weird. Okay. Is, the The fact that animatronics are coming alive at night to kill you in the first place isn't, okay. isn't shh, enough? Shh, shh. Oh, sorry. That's not the weird part. The weird so, part is the, the mechanics of this game, because it's different and weird. Okay, sure. Go. Yeah. So, when you first get in, on your left, you have Ballora. Ballora is a whole new animatronic. We've never heard of her before. It's just a dancing ballerina with, yeah, Nana and uh, Papa. She's the ballerina. Yes, Ballora is the ballerina <clears throat> with her little um, ballets, which are the little tiny, like, mannequin-looking things. Oh, okay. Around. She has she has tiny she has tiny puppets that she, dance with her. Yeah, she has tiny mechanics. Okay. Uh, animatronics that dance with her. But they're not like the jibby jabbers. No. Okay, good. Good. No, they are made to dance with her. Okay. So, things that we need to know about Ballora, her eye, her design is her eyes are always closed and she's always dancing. That's kind of her thing. She does have her own song, and that song also comes into play when we learn more about Mrs. Afton. Okay. Um... So then on your right hand side, you have Foxy. We have our own Foxy in this game. It is not the original Foxy, not that red design. It is pink and white. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Now things are getting weird. Yeah. So all the designs are, there's no fur in any of these designs. There are, they're all hard plastic shells. Okay. So if we look at like the FNAF 2 animatronics, very, very similar to that. Okay. Okay. Um, then you crawl through a ventilation shaft in front of you. And this is where we meet Baby. Baby's our new animatronic. Yeah, okay. We, we, we caught a brief glimpse of her in the movie. Yes. And it was only, it was just quick. It was very quick. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Baby, we learn in the trailer that she is haunted. The reason that we learn this is because in the trailer, her eyes start as blue and they turn to green at the end of the trailer. Okay. Okay. And there's only one other character that we've met that has green eyes, Elizabeth Afton. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So one of the opening voice lines that we get for Elizabeth is her going, I'm going to do a really bad British accent here, but it's funny. Oh, boy. And she goes, but daddy, I want to go play with her. Okay. Yeah. So okay. we get a lot more voice lines like that. And then the ending, one of the ending cut scenes in um, Sister Location is Elizabeth getting scooped by Baby. 
Okay. So, like we said last time, um, I don't remember... I think we touched on this very, very briefly. All of these sister location animatronics are built to carry children. Okay. So, that's what you mean by scooped, not like... Yeah. Opened up and scooped out. No, that's later. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to foreshadow. Yeah. So, she gets... We'll say snatched. She gets snatched by baby. Snatched. Snatched. So, we also learned from baby's voice lines. This game is very voice line heavy. Okay. Like, very... It's like one of the first games that Scott is actually getting voice actors for each of these different parts. So, each part has their own voice actor. Super cool in the long run. Super, super cool. Right. right. But it's what makes this game so much more complicated and weird compared to everything else. Mm. Like, it's not just screaming. It's not just, like, one cutscene at the end. Every single character has their own voice and own things that they tell you. Okay. Yeah. So, when you go into baby's room to check on her, the way that you, like, get the animatronics to act right is you give them regulated shocks, which obviously they're not happy about. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, So, when you go to shock baby, it doesn't work. Like, nothing works. So, then she takes over and she tells you about her story. So fun little voice guy over the intercom is gone you no longer have your now let's give baby a regulated shock and she goes like hi like she has her little voice come in okay yeah we don't know what happened to him he's he's done for but he comes back later okay well at least it's not phone guy (laughs) no it's not phone guy this is where things get really complicated so hold on to your snatchels we're going crazy (laughs) whatever those may be yeah i don't know you you pick your own snatchel. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. Um, so she comes on and she tells you about how she was only on stage for one day. Okay. Um, and she was programmed to count the amount of children. So she's telling you all different amounts. She was like, then there was four, then six, then three, then two, then one. And, and then what happens she says something about how she was also programmed to give ice cream to kids so her stomach opens up gives an ice cream cone that one child was elizabeth okay all right all right she takes the ice cream cone baby grabs her pulls her into her stomach cavity okay hence the scooping hence this the snatching the snatching the snatching snatching yes snatching yes if you will um so that is how we know that elizabeth dies now, we have a grief-stricken family that has had one child die, been taken by the father's creations, which is horrible to think about. So, we have a family of now two boys, a mom and a dad, that have just lost their youngest child. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask a question that's probably going to be a little bit beyond foreshadowing, uh-huh. and you probably can't answer that yet because of where we're at in the story. Yeah. But what is the purpose of the animatronic being empty enough to carry a human child? We will get to that later. All right. Because William Afton right. is a crazy, crazy man. That's well, what the we answer is. We determined that much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But they don't know that yet. Okay. Yeah. You don't know that yet. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's all I got right now. I know. It's okay. Okay. So, yeah. Again, animatronics are big enough to carry a child. That's crazy. Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Why? Maybe, maybe to hold children? Why? But why? But why? <laughs> um, so, that is how we learn that Elizabeth dies. She's gone. She's done for. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Another tally to the kill kid chart. <laughs> to the <laughs> dead kid chart. <laughs> We're at like 10, oh boy. 11 yeah. now. Yeah. We're now we're near done. Yeah. I, from game one through five, we we're already at 11 children. No, we were at more than that. Oh, okay. We're not done with five yet. No, we're not done with five yet. Okay. Um, and there are also kids that we know die behind the scenes that we never see. I see. Okay. I believe the end total by the end of all of the games are in the 50s. My goodness. Yeah. Okay, so this is a maniacal serial killer that we've got going on here. Mm-hmm. Okay. And all of this resolves itself? 
as in uh, gives us reasons for why no so he just does it to do it yeah he's a definition of a serial killer psychopathic serial killer okay well just does it to do it okay then yeah we never get justification we never get reasoning sure yeah sure why not yeah why not okay go crazy no <laughs> no <laughs> okay so that's one theory i just remember the other theory for baby okay the other theory is charlotte uh, uh charlotte emily okay yes henry emily's daughter the other yes. Char- founder yes Char- yeah because we know that she has pigtails and she also dies to one of the creations okay so the other theory is that she was the one that died sure with baby sure okay um and then henry struck in by grief because his only child has been murdered by one of these creations um again afton made all these all these creations so his business partner's creation has now killed his daughter right um he set baby loose in a room with just him and that is how he committed suicide that is another working theory we don't know which one's correct so you get to pick your own oh my okay I, like, I personally like to think that all of the aftons are somewhere in an animatronic because all of them do do have an animatronic that they will be in um but also the emily theory the emmy the emily family theory is also a very valid theory and i think it also has a lot of good points to it okay all of the animatronics you you're you are theorizing all the animatronics or all the aftons mm-hmm. are in an animatronic in one or have died by one except one Except one. Mm -mm. All of them. He's not in an animatronic. He's in a suit. Technically, he is now part of an animatronic, though. Okay. We're speaking about William Afton. Yeah. Okay. We'll get to all that later. Right. Um, But yeah, he technically is a part of the animatronic. All right. Because the spring lots went, then he's now in, the mechanic is now in him, so he is part of the animatronic. All right. All right. We talked about how he died. We know that. Well, and this also alludes to something else that we need to probably address eventually in this the books? one of the side games of Purple Dude walking down the street. Oh no, this isn't that's in Sister Location. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. He's jumping ahead. He doesn't I, know the I will lore. not I will not now. Go ahead. He didn't have the hyperfixation in eighth grade. That okay. was me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so in between each of the nights in Sister Location, we get a little cutscene back in that 8-bit style that we've seen throughout a bunch of the games now, of a guy in a purple shirt walking down the street waving at all his neighbors. And they're all just walking by. At the first night, they're really happy to see him, and they're all just waving. It's a good time. That scene goes on and on and on, and we'll see how it progresses later on. So the first night, it's just a happy, happy scene. So now we get to the second night of Sister Location. The second night, something... You need to get to the control room because Freddy is back in the control room and he needs some repairs done. The only way to get to the control room is through Ballora's room. Mm-hmm. So this is when we hear Ballora's song. Ballora's song is what really gives us the hint that um, Mrs. Afton is Ballora, is inside Ballora. Okay, okay. Um, so if we're going along the theory of it is Elizabeth Afton inside Baby... I, I like to think that because it like wraps everything up in a nice bow. So we're just going to go with that for now. Okay, sure. Um, If we go with that, then we hear her song about someone locking themselves away inside their tomb who are not listening to her, not hearing her, what she's saying, any of that. So the theory is, is that that is her kind of like talking to Afton in a way of after their child dies he's locking himself away into his work they're not be able to grieve together as a family he is completely hiding himself away and from his point of view he is probably seeing her as something someone who's not focusing on the important things just doing frivolous things in life her eyes are blind to what's going on around her Ballora's designs that her eyes are always closed and she's just dancing around okay so that is the theory that mrs afton is inside Ballora. okay okay um that's all we have for that that is all the evidence we have for that okay interesting yeah interesting so you have to sneak through Ballora's like enclosure (laughs) (laughs) um her habitat yeah her habitat (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, and if you make too much noise, she'll come get you and da 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 da, you know, whatever. Jump scare things. Oh, okay. Okay. So Ballora will kill you. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Weird, but all right. Yeah. So once you make it to the control room where Freddy is, Freddy is his own animatronic. Again, he is now white and pink. Everything is white and pink and pastel in this game. Um, and the only thing that we have for Bonnie is a hand puppet. Bunny is a hand puppet that animatronic Freddy has. Okay. Um, and the way that Freddy calms down is Bonnie talks to him. Okay, that's just freaky right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Freddy, whose voice is so funny in this game, he'll be like, I hear something! I can't do it right. It's very, like, raspy. It's like... That's more accurate than what it actually is. So it's kind of like the screen, the jump scare screen. Yeah. Okay. Um, gotcha. And then Bonnie comes on and is like, I think it was just a mouse. Go back to sleep. That's actually very accurate to what Bonnie's voice sounds like in this game. Very proud of that one. Okay. Um, so as you're doing repairs on Freddy, you have to keep him in check with that Bonnie puppet because he'll be like, I hear something. Um, and then you play Bonnie to calm him down. Okay. So okay. that is our only... No, we get one more scene with Freddy. But that is how night two goes. Once you're done, you leave back out through Ballora's enclosure, and then you get to go home. That's it for night two. Okay. That's All it. Right. Okay. Easy enough. Easy enough. Hopefully. Yeah. Then we get to night three. Okay. Night three, the animatronics were acting weird, so two mechanics went down to make sure everything was running correctly. Mechanics never left. Okay. So when you turn on the lights to check on Ballora and Fred and Foxy, you see a hanging body in each of them. A hanging body? By a noose. Okay, so they committed suicide? Or did the animatronics kill them and frame it as suicide? Okay, now we're really... That's, that's a big leap. Presuming that even if the animatronics were haunted... Presumably, by what we assume are children, mm-hmm. how would a chil- child know how to tie a noose? Great question. I mean, if they were in Boy Scouts, they know how. That's just a big, basic slipknot. Uh, kind of. It's not basic. It's not that hard. It's between nine and 12 loops. Yeah. So. We learned how to do it at the climbing gym, so. Right. No, I understand. Yeah. Great slipknot for making hitches for climbing, if anyone's wondering. Mm-hmm. Great slipknot. Um, yeah. That's where I know it from. <laughs> All right. Anyway, moving on. Anyway, I believe this is in night three. It might be in night four. It might be completely my bad. Oopsie daisies. You know, your honor. I plead oopsie daisies. Your honor. I'm just a girl. De- exactly. <laughs> what? <laughs> just keep going. Just, just, um, just keep going. Just keep going. Okay. <laughs> so then we have to go... I believe it is night three. So then you have to sneak back into a different control room. It's actually a repair room through Foxy's enclosure this time. And you have to flash a light to make sure that Foxy isn't anywhere near you. And if you don't flash the light in time and wait for it to completely wind back up again, Foxy's going to get you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so once you make it into the control room, you need to take something out of Freddy's chest. We don't know what it is. It's just a tiny disc that you have to get. Um, so it's a bunch of different things of like push his nose, hit his right ear, touch his finger, <laughs> bop it, smack it's it, literally <laughs> bop it, but with Freddie. Um, so once you get it out of his chest compartment, um, okay. Bonnie starts jumping around. Okay. Bonnie is off of his hand and jumping around. So you got to catch Bonnie and stick him back on. Oh, it just gets weirder and weirder. We're from this nowhere point on. near the weirdness yet oh no we're beyond weird no not yet it gets so much worse okay um once that is done you never actually leave it's just like okay you're done um and that's it so you're like oh i'm assuming that we left everything is fine then you load into night four okay this is the level that had to be patched later on in coding because it was impossible to beat at the beginning okay Okay. Mark somehow still beat it, but it is completely, it is like one of the hardest, the original download of this game without any updates or repairs. It is so impossibly hard to beat that only like three people completed it before the patch was sent out. Okay. it was so difficult. 
when Mark played it, he had like five different timers set so he could make sure everything was set perfectly. Okay. So what makes it what makes it that crazy? Great question. Thank you for asking. Um, so when you get into night four, you don't go down the elevator shaft this time. You are still in the facility. You never left the facility. Okay. You are inside of an animatronic. Oh. The game opens to you being inside an animatronic. And all of a sudden, Ballora is talking to you. She's talking about how everything, you looked naked, so they put you inside of an animatronic. And be careful, because if you wiggle too much, the spring locks will snap. Okay. So this level is okay. about keeping the spring locks completely winded open so you don't die. All right. And along with that, the little uh, ballerina ets things, yes. they're also below, they're crawling into the suit with you. Why? I don't know. Because they're coming to get you. Okay. Um. So the only way that you can get them off is if you shake. But if you shake, then the spring locks open. And the spring locks want to go yeah. and do their thing thing yeah so you have eight different spring locks four on each side that you have to keep completely wound while you're shaking the different ballerina things off keeping all of them wound and as you're also like your character is breathing they're also loosening so it's like a steady like that you hear of all of those loosening right so you have to shake yourself wind them all up shake off wind them all up and doing that is so hard making sure all of them are kept in check and you're shaking enough and everything is going right it is such a hard level that like three people beat it with the original way it was Uh, yeah okay yeah okay yeah it was almost an impossible game to actually complete because that level was so hard oh honestly yeah this is okay you're coming from a guy who came from a generation of video games that the most advanced at your age Mm -hmm. when i was doing video games was something called dragon's lair I don't know what that is. Uh, I know, I know. And all you kids, go look it up. Google that. Dragon's Lair. Um, essentially what it was, it was a video game based off of a Laserdisc hmm. movie c- cartoon. And you actually, the timing of when you push the buttons actually made it switch to the different scenes of either achieving whatever goal you were going to get you know swinging a sword at the right time doing things like that Mm -hmm. um if you missed it if you did it wrong you died yep um but that was the highest tech game at the time so yeah come a long way oh my have we cyberpunk 2077 Detroit Become Human. Um, uh, okay, yeah. Um, all of the games made by the Until Dawn company. Yeah. At my age, Cyberpunk was a ro- tabletop role-playing game. Yeah. Okay. So Cyberpunk 2077 has its own issues, though. It's okay. <laughs> it glitches out in really weird ways. But the ray tracing is beautiful. Okay, great. As I said, yeah. it was a tabletop role-playing game yeah. when I was that young. Yeah. So... To catch everyone up on the weird video game lingo I just used, ray tracing is like when you're looking at a puddle of water in real life and like how life actually reflects into that water. Having that in a video game where when you like turn your body, the sh- like the reflection also shifts so it looks exactly like it does in real life. That's what ray tracing is. Exactly. And you can actually thank a particular company for that particular thing. I do believe that's a Pixar thing. Makes sense. Yeah, because they were pretty much pioneers in a lot of that. Two hours later. Yeah, it's that it's that time of year. It's yes, it is. It's that time of year. All right. All righty. So that is the fourth night. Keep in mind, between all of these nights, it is still that little same cut scene of the guy walking home and waving at everybody and everything's all happy, but it gets weirder and weirder every single time. Okay. So the third night, you're like slightly green. That's weird. Yeah. All right. You like, you like you know when you're super duper sick and you just have like a weird pale kind of greenish hue to you? Yes. That's what it is. Okay. Um Okay. So not everyone is happy and waving at you anymore. Some people are. Some people are still happy to see you, but some people just have a frown and they're just watching you walk by. Cause all of a sudden you look really weird. Which okay. like ableist, how dare they? But <laughs> you know. Well, yeah, but no, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I if someone's it. green walking down the street, I'm gonna look at them a little weird. Sorry. Yep. Um Especially if it's someone that I've seen every single day and all of a sudden they're green. I'm going to be a little weirded out by that. Indeed. So after the fourth night, 
the same cutscene happens. This time you're very green. You are green. Like you are okay. green. Like gr- green, like trees. <laughs> so like you're green. <laughs> okay. Um, so All now right. like one or two people are waving at you as you go by. Everyone else is just kind of like watching you walk by because it's weird. Because you're a freak now. Yeah. Okay. No one's that color. No one's green. Okay. So the fifth night to make sure I get these correct because this is where everything important is happening. Sure. I believe the fifth night is in the scooping room. We are now in the scooping room. Okay. I think I got my cutscenes wrong, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. Just know that you get more and more green and then the fourth night you're actually purple. You're not green. You're fully purple at this point. Purple. You're purple at this point. You're a decaying body. That's what's happening in this. Ah, uh, so you're a zombie? In a way. Okay, but you're still conscious? Yes. All right. You're purple. I'm not quite point. sure how that works, but okay. Oh, we'll get to how it works later. All right. And that's when we're going to get to the books. This might be a three-part series. Cause we still have to talk about all the books. I, I was going to say, we and we can chunk this up as much as you want to. We can create mm-hmm. this into a long series of whatever, if you like. Yeah. So... You know, go as you will. Because there's like 35 books now. <laughs> and I've only read two graphic novels. Yeah. Two. That's it. There's a lot of books. We're also a lot more lore drops. So okay. Okay. We still have an AR game and two VR games and a simulator and a bunch of things to get through. Well then. This is going to be a long series. Okay. Um, Fine. Let let it roll then. Yeah. We can probably break it up too and do other things in the middle and yeah. You know because this is we're at the end of everything where everything gets very very lore heavy. So it's going to take longer for me to explain and get through. Okay. All right. Um. So yeah, this is going to be a really long series. Basically, is okay. what I'm getting at. So, fine. But we're not done with this particular. Oh, no, we're not. Level game. No. Yet. No. Okay. Way. So when you get into. Uh, night five, you are in the scooping room. This is where my favorite voice lines happen because Baby is so sassy for no reason. She gets on and she's like, do you know where you are? You're in the scooping room. Do you know what they do here? Like, literally, it sounds like she's like, you're in the scooping room. Do you know what happens in the scooping room? Like, literally, like, <laughs> she's grumpy. Like, she sounds like GLaDOS from Portal. Like, she's grumpy. Yeah. Okay. Love, love her, by the way. One of my favorite voice characters ever in Portal. Love her. So you are in the scooping room. There's nothing to play in the fourth game, in the sure. fifth night. There's nothing to play. Okay. You are in this, like, again, your own little enclosure. Like, Right. It's a big circle. There are a bunch of body parts everywhere. And you notice that it's Ballora body parts and Baby Bobby body parts and Freddy body parts. And foxy okay. body parts. Okay. So they're just there for some reason. So what happens in the final night is you get scooped. You are scooped. Your insides are taken out and something is put inside you. And you maintain your consciousness. Yeah. You maintain who you are. You don't really, you're not dead. Yeah. Here. Yeah. But you're dead. Yeah. Okay. You are a decaying body. And you'll never guess who we are in this game. Michael Afton. Michael Afton. We're Michael in this game. Michael Afton. Yeah. Okay. Again, all of the Afton family will have an animatronic at some point, which I think is really cool. Okay. So in this game, we are playing as Michael. Um, That's it, really. That's all we really know. So Michael gets scooped. And then we meet Ennard. Ennard is my favorite animatronic ever in this entire series. I love Ennard so much. Okay. There's so much cool lore. Ennard. Ennard. Or Enard. Ennard. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm saying, Ennard. the only reason I'm saying that is because a lot of people think Ennard and spell it with an I. No. Ennard and spell it with an A. So, no. yeah. Okay. Anyway. So, Ennard is a compilation, like, compile, a giant hodgepodge mix composite yeah i like hodgepodge better um mix of every single animatronic at the sister location location 
He is all of them and none of them at the same time. So he's way different than Mangle. Yeah. Okay. Mangle is just an animatronic that's been taken apart and put back together a million times. Right. Ennard has each, like, child soul from each of those animatronics inside him as well. Oh, okay. So he's a true amalgam of the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, he, what is he called? Um, some people call him, like, the Ennard Group, because later on, through the code of websites, we find out what happens, which is insane to think about. Um, Ennard is one of my favorite characters in this, in this entire series because okay. he is so cool. So what happens is Ennard is put inside of you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the final cutscene of you walking back to your house is you are purple. You cannot really move that well. You're like chunking along kind of. Right. And right. you stop all of a sudden and you're like. It looks like a cat throwing up. Like, that's literally the animation is like, <laughs> uh, and entered, you basically throw up entered into a sewer grate. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Now that you've th- thrown up all of your uh, animatronic insides, what happens to you? So in the animation, you first collapse to the ground. Okay. And all of a sudden you stand back up again. What? No, yeah. no, yeah. no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Your eyes. No. Uh, yeah. No. You stand back up, your eyes start glowing, and then you just keep walking. Okay, so are you still you then? You are. Or consciously, s- up, up here. I don't know, actually. Okay. The reason I ask is because that sounds like now there's been a change of consciousness, not just a, cha- a physical change. We know that Ennard still has all five personalities still in him when he leaves into the sewer grate. Okay. Plus you? No. Oh. Okay. Okay. Michael's still Michael. Okay. Michael, our beloved. Love him. All right. I'm trying to think and make sure I got everything from this game. There's also like tiny lore things that don't really matter later okay. on. Um, another cutscene between each night is you back at your house eating popcorn watching a um, reality TV show. Like, yeah. Okay, sure. And you can get two different final cutscenes with that. You either look at your own shadow and see a purple glowing eye. Um, that okay. is if you throw up entered at the very end. If you, I don't remember how you do it, but you can somehow avoid getting scooped. Okay. I don't remember how. The only thing I remember is getting, uh, getting scooped, but there is a way you can avoid it. And if you do avoid it, that final cutscene is entered entering your house. Okay, so Ennard's coming for you. Yeah. Okay. Because Michael and William look very, very similar. Ah, To the point the animatronics cannot tell them apart. Okay, so the animatronics are still in revenge mode. Yes. Okay, even after the fire, even after everything else, even Mm -hmm. after what they did to Springtrap, even... Yeah, because Springtrap's not gone yet. No, I know, because he, he always comes back. <laughs> you bet he does. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you bet he does. Okay. I believe that is all for sister location. Okay. All right. <laughs> now we can move on to Pizzeria Simulator. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Pizzeria Simulator is what was dropped as what looks like a little, like, tycoon game. where like, oh, my God, fun. I get to make my own pizzeria. Like, da 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 Fun times. Right. There's so much lore in this game. This game is so lore heavy, it's not even funny. Okay. Okay. Um, So the first thing that you do when you open the game is part of your nightly closing tasks are to check outside by the dumpster and see if any animatronics have been left there. And if they're in good condition, you have to test them to make sure they're in good condition. And then you can decide whether to scrap them or to keep them. Weird, right? Yeah. Okay. We'll get to why later. Okay, good. We do know we good. do know the why for this one. Okay. Um, so you get a bunch of different animatronics. We get what we call Molten Freddy, which is what Ennard was, but just Foxy, Ballora, and Freddy. Okay. Baby's gone. Baby's her own animatronic now. Okay. She got kicked out of the uh, out of the Ennard clan. And All right. We know that because in the code for the websites of FNAF World. 
and Five Nights at Freddy's and Scott Cawthon website, they're talking to each other in the code. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And what the conversation is, is like back and forth of baby and then everyone else arguing. So they kick her out of the entered group. All right. So she's now her own animatronic again. Okay. She has put herself together with trash she has found. Oh my. And that is how she is walking. Like suddenly her feet are roller skates. Huh? Because she found them in the trash and now that's how she's walking. Right. So she did self-repair and Mm -hmm. yeah, there we are. So we get Molten Freddy, we get Baby, and then we get Lefty. (laughs) Okay. Who's Lefty? (laughs) Great question. It's a black Freddy. How odd. Okay. Yeah. It's a Freddy, but his color palette is gray and black. Okay. Okay. Lefty's freaking creepy. <laughs> well, we had Phantom Freddy before. Mm-hmm. We had Nightmare Fredbear. We had Phantom Freddy. We had Toy Freddy. We had Normal Freddy. Yeah. We had Molten Freddy now. Yeah. Okay. There are about, I think, 10 different iterations of Freddy Fazbear in this franchise. So if that's the case, then what does Lefty do? Great question. He's just weird. That's about it. Yeah. Does he talk to you? Nope. Does he try and kill you? Yep. Okay. Well, that's not different than before. No, but there's no soul in him. He's just weird. Okay, so he's... Oh, all right, all right. He's not like other girls. No. (laughs) He's not like other Freddies. He's just unique and different. (laughs) To quote my sister, he's a unicorn. Yeah, he is. Um, So in this game, the, like, base game of it... It is just a pizzeria tycoon. You get to make your own pizzeria. You get to do a whole bunch of things. But then there's the closing shift. And the closing shift is if you keep the animatronics that you're finding outside, they are coming to get you at night. If you don't, you're completely fine during the night. Okay. So if you don't create, if you create your own pizzeria and have no animatronics in it, you win. Yes. But then you don't get the lore. Right. No, I get that. Yeah. I get that. Um... Yeah, so <laughs> you can get animatronics. You just don't need. You just can't buy Lefty or let in any of the animatronics. Okay. You are okay. buying things like you get co- uh, coins for playing games. Like it's a, it's a fun little tycoon game. Well, no, I get it. It's yeah. It's like every other yeah. side tycoon type game exactly. that there has ever existed. Yeah. So you can get <laughs> you can get the pig and Orville the elephant <laughs> and the frog. And okay. You can also get Mr. Crate. Number one crate is my favorite thing. Yes. Ever. Okay. <gasps> I saw a YouTube video that a guy who created uh, Five Nights at Freddy's different uh-huh. game iterations, this was one of them with creating the pizzeria. Yeah. And number one crate was very, very popular number with one everybody. crate is one of my favorite things. It's literally just a milk crate upside down, two giant googly eyes, and a number one foam finger. Yep. That's it. Yeah, that's all that it is, and that's one of the anima- that's one of the animatronics you can buy. There's number crate, one crate. There's yeah. a broom with googly eyes. There's a vacuum yes. with googly eyes. Like, yes, you get yeah. to make your own little thing. But with those little arcade games that you buy, you can get lore. Okay, all right. So we have Midnight Racers, which is where we learn more about um, the Afton family. Okay, so Midnight Racers. You're again. It's like a little like car driving game you're getting around all the other cars trying to go fast you know right right um at the very bottom there's a little gap in the boundaries of the game if you go through the gap uh uh-oh lore time Woo! all right then yeah all right then so you go through and all of a sudden you're driving down a road in the middle of a forest and it's raining so you're driving down and then there's one spot where you can pull off and it's juniors we don't know what juniors is but if you hop out of your car um the guy who's standing at the front will be like you know you can't be here and then you get back in your car and you leave okay keep driving down the road then you get to a house you go into the house there's a little gray character sitting there um if you go talk to the little gray character watching tv he'll say something along the lines of you know he doesn't want to talk to you something like that um all right and then if you leave and walk out around the house your character will say something along the lines of he better not have snuck out to that place again. Go around to the back window because the door that you were trying to get into is locked. It's locked on the inside. Of course. You go around the back of the house. The window is broken. 
There are two little animatronic footsteps there. A little mound of dirt. Okay. You know where this is going. Kind of, yeah. Um, And footsteps walking off into the distance. So let me just cut to the chase here. We don't need all the flim and flam. That game, you are William Afton. You are driving home after what's thought to be a murder at Junior's. It is not a bar. It is a pizzeria establishment. You can't go in because there has been a murder and it's a crime scene. Right. So you leave. You go down to your house. That gray character that you speak to, that's the older brother. That's Michael. Yep. Yep. That is Michael. Um, Because the only other character in this entire franchise, text colors is very important. (laughs) The only other character in that franchise that had great text is Michael. So that is Michael that you talk to. When you sneak around the house, you are are trying to find Crying Child. Yep. Doesn't have a name. We just know him as Crying Child. Um, He snuck off to that place again. He broke out of his room, out of the back window, because an animatronic was luring him out and follows him over to Freddy's. Yep. So that is what we know from Midnight Racers. Okay. That's, I believe that's all we learned from Midnight Racers. Okay. Then there's another little arcade game you can buy, which is like Fruit Dash or something like that. It's like a little Pac-Man game, but you're a little girl running around. No, you're not a little girl the whole time. You're basically a little character going around getting a bunch of fruit. Sure. It's like Pac-Man, but the dots, but it's fruit. Sure. So as you collect all the fruit, if you complete like all the levels, then you get like a little bonus level where all of a sudden it's like little dogs that you're looking for. It's not fruit. It's little dogs every now and then. And you keep going and you get more weird things like that. The very last one is a dead bloody dog and flowers. Uh? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I know it's funny and I know you like the sound. Yeah. But it's so appropriate at this point. Yeah. Okay. Um, And what we know happens is if you win that level, you completely win that level, you get everything, um, then the game over congratulations thing comes on the screen and we see the reflection of who's playing the game. Okay. It is a little girl with blonde pigtails and blue eyes and standing over her shoulder is a man in a yellow bunny costume. Yup. Yup. So this is where we think we meet Chica and mangle okay mangle has the spirit of a dog not anything else right hence the unable to actually speak about anything or exactly at, at all because mangle's the only animatronic that can't talk right so this is where we meet i don't remember her name um but the girl who possesses chica um because what happened was she was lured away because um, Afton had said, I think I found your dog. I think he got hit by a car. Mm-hmm. He had killed okay. her dog, lured her away, and then killed her. Right. So Chica was the first, which sucks lore-wise. Well, yeah, it does. But Chica was the first. She was the first one that was lured away and killed. And that's where we meet her, is in that little fruit game. Again, still in a little tycoon game that no one thought was important. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Scott hates us. Um, (laughs) he can't make it easy otherwise he's not going to make money and people won't buy the game anymore and so true you know i'm sorry but yeah you know it's kind of got it's got to kind of got to suck yeah so no i like finding lore in these little spots i think it's really fun (laughs) um then we also have candy cadet (laughs) i love candy cadet this is okay now this is where it's candy cadet is just weird on its on the surface Mm -hmm. um yeah, Balloon Boy, The Puppet. Yeah. Okay. Candy Cadet will tell you different stories depending on how many coins you give him. You need to give him five different coins to get all points of the story. All these stories basically come together of five things being brought together as one. AKA our story of Ennard. Okay. That is okay. where this comes in, is Candy Cadet will tell you the five different things that come together as one, and that is how we get entered. And so that's how we can assume Ennard has five different animatronics, or had five different animatronics. Right. And now Baby is kicked out of the gang. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, my favorite ending in any of these games is with Pizzeria Simulator. Okay. 
So if you let in all of the animatronics, this is how you get the good ending of the game. You let in all of the animatronics um, and you're playing one final FNAF style game with them. You are trying to like survive the night basically. But the ventilation system is a box, it is a perfect square. There's no way in and out anymore. Okay. Then we learn we are playing as Henry Emily. Bam. Okay. Lore drop. Yeah. Um, so Henry Emily is like, you're the one playing is this game because our final cut scene, the way that the game ends is again, everything is set on fire. So we burn it all down again. Again. I forgot to mention Afton is also one of the animatronics who led in. He led in Springtrap as well. He's one of the ones that you find outside. Okay. Whoopsie right. daisies. Yep, whoopsie. Um, so once you have everyone inside the building, including yourself, you set it on fire. So the ending cutscene is a fiery doorway with all the different animatronics like showing their faces, basically. Okay. Um, it's like little pictures almost. But sure. the voiceover at the end is one of the coolest voiceovers I've ever heard in my entire life. It is still one of my favorites. It still gives me chills. Um, but it's basically Henry talking about how I'm, I am now joining my daughter and you are coming with me. And the ending line is, so don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. Uh-huh. Chills. Chills. Yeah, chills. no kidding. So no good. No kidding. That is how the game ends. Okay. And honestly, I think we're yeah. going to have to have a part three. <laughs> yeah, we got through two more games and there's still a bunch left. Yeah, and it's we are basically about eight minutes away from an hour. After yeah. editing, it's going to be a little shorter, but... I think this is a really good stopping point here. Yeah. Um, there, this is, we are so lore heavy right now. The rest of the games are going to be full of lore. Okay. And hopefully we'll get some background and some clarity and some direction. Hopefully. I'll well, do my best. Well, no, it's it's not you. Yeah. It's Scott. It's Scott. Okay. Just I'm just saying. Yeah. Dude. Well, he doesn't, he stepped away from the franchise. Oh, okay. It's not him anymore. Oh. Yeah, but still his baby. It's still his baby, but he's not yeah. a part of it anymore. It's now Steel Wool. Oh, Steel Wool is the company that oh. is FNAF now. Okay. Which, which they're super cool. We like them a lot. Well, right on. Well, again, thank you. Thank you for this weird and twisted tale. I know. And hopefully in about another month, I'll have you back again. Yeah. And we'll get it done again. Now, we were lucky tonight. She can actually came up early yeah um but unfortunately this this video won't be out until around the 16th yeah so anyway thank you very much folks thank you for joining us thank you cat for coming back in for of tea course. time i love info dumping i now have a captive audience it's great <laughs> and i'm hoping to keep providing you with one yeah, i don't have to wait to be with mj anymore <laughs> <laughs> tell her hi you. All right. My favorite. We're going to get married. <laughs> All right, folks. That's pretty much it for us. Like I said, in about a month, we'll do this all again and hopefully we'll get on to game seven. Yeah. Now we're getting into the VR games. Oh, virtual reality. Again, some of my favorite. We're getting to my favorite games oh. of the franchise. I won't say his name. No, nope, don't do it. This is the game, the first VR game is one that legitimately scared me. Like, as a 20-year-old woman, I got, I still get legitimately scared by this game. All right, enough said. Again, thank you very much. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you want to continue to hear what we've got going on. Thank you much, folks, and we'll see you real soon. Hold, 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 hold,